Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds. At Mint Mobile, we like to do the opposite of what Big Wireless does. They charge you a lot, we charge you a little. So naturally, when they announced they'd be raising their prices due to inflation, we decided to deflate our prices due to not hating you. That's right. We're cutting the price of Mint Unlimited from $30 a month to just $15 a month. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes in details. If you're a facilities manager at a warehouse and your HVAC system goes down, it can turn up the heat. Literally. But don't sweat it. Granger has you covered. Granger offers over a million industrial grade products for all your operations, including warehouse HVAC maintenance. And even better, they offer access to experts and fast delivery, so you and your warehouse can both keep your cool. Call 1 800 Granger, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Whoa, that's a good looking ballpark. Thank you. Now he's in, Pat. I That's think better looking than a major league field. Mm -hmm. Towel ball, baby. Wow. I think on this weekend when we could uh, disembowel the twins and uh, <laughs> make fun of the links and other things, we should talk a little golf first, don't you think? <laughs> yes. You and I were both watching golf yesterday afternoon while other events were taking place. Mm -hmm. That was quite the playoff. Between Zala Torres and this Straka guy who apparently won a tournament and then missed eight straight cuts. Isn't that what they told Six us? Six straight. Six straight cuts. Yep. And uh, that Zala Torres is, had won more money in a year without a win right. than anybody in PGA Tour history. Right. But he can hit at some funny places at times, can he? Yes. I mean, all of a sudden his driver... He tried to hit the one out of bounds right. at, at the that end there. That was the second playoff hole. Uh, no, I thought, uh, I didn't think that. Was that a playoff hole? Yeah. Was that a playoff yeah. hole? Second okay. playoff hole. Zalatoris hits it way right, hit almost out of bounds. And fell down otherwise. It and Sepka hits it left enough to be flirting with the water. Mm -hmm. And he can't, he decides he doesn't like his stance. He could have advanced the ball down the mm -hmm. fairway, but he yeah, decides no. Yeah, he came no. out and hit it about four feet, right? Yeah, and yeah. and he so he I hits it that, on. Yeah. And they advance. They get past that hole. Mm -hmm. Now they go to the third playoff hole, which they go back to eleven, which is a par three. Par three. Yeah. And uh, what did Sepka do? <laughs> hit it in the water. But first, Zalatoris hit it on top of the stone wall, that, right next to the water, and the ball was just. How the ball stayed up there was miraculous. Lodged between the stones and the grass. Yes, and these these aren't stony stones. These are big, big stones well, like, like flagstones. Like yeah, flag like you build a wall with, and uh, it was just sitting there. And uh, it only took him about twelve minutes to decide that he was going to go back and right. uh, drop it, uh, go back to the drop area, and then he hit it in there tight. And uh, so they both were hitting their third from the drop area. Mm -hmm. And Straka. Right. Yeah, but Straka. No. How, how Straka could. How Straka could not hit it on the green after seeing where that guy hit his shot. You three hit it over there left as far as you can, bring it back. You have what? a sixty foot putt, you know. But uh, anyway, it was fun. It was fun. It and was really had, fun. They had a big rowdy crowd in Memphis too, and it didn't look ungodly steamy no, there, it did which not. I thought it, it would not. be. I remember the Lumpster being in contention there once or one, and Lumpster's got a, you know, he's a, he's he's got a big frame there. Yeah, I remember him playing <laughs> down there one day, one down there. <laughs> By the time he got to the first tee after warming up, it looked like somebody came up and sprayed him with a hose for about twenty minutes, and he had to play all day in that heat. It's amazing, big chubby guy, and he always played best in the heat. You know, he always uh, that he won be, the Honda. But yeah, that was in the winter. That, that might was not have been winter. terrible. It wasn't that, but he he, he had some good uh, tournament runs in the. Uh... Do you know that his son, Carson the mm Third, -hmm. is uh, qualified for the won the uh, qualifying here for the U.S. Amateur, and he's in the U.S. Amateur fourth generation of Herons. Really, his great grandpa isn't that coming up this week? Uh, probably, yeah. His great grandpa. Uh, Lee Carson Heron mm -hmm. was a really good player, and he made the U.S. Amateur. And then his dad, Carson, who's still around, I'm having lunch with him Thursday. Yeah. And uh, 
you know, really good player. Mm-hmm. And he was in, I think, three U.S. amateurs. And then Timmy was in it. And uh, and then uh, now Jim got a, a Carson in his name. I don't think he does. Hmm. I'm not sure though. What's I, the kid's name? Uh, Car- Carson something in the the, the 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 kid's Carson. But the kid is about six foot four and weighs. Two ten, baby. He's a flat-bellied six foot four. Yeah, he don't look like daddy. No, <laughs> <laughs> but he plays in New Mexico, the same place Timmy did, and uh, he's he had a good freshman year down there. But uh, see, I'll see what he does in the U.S. How many US of the uh, how many now advance to the next FedEx playoff? Seventy. Uh, Seventy. Yes. And so of the one twenty-five, uh, thirty, and uh, uh, fifty-five are done. Fifty-five are done. Yeah, and. They, the, what was it, last year or the year before? Because remember, they used to have three, 125, 170. Yeah. And then they said, ah, it's silly to, you know, but with all the other stuff. Are we going from 70 to 30? Yeah, but now they go 125, 70, 30. Which 30 is, in Atlanta. I think they had a lot of people no-showing in the, one of the first two events when they had 125 and 100, so they just went. But Memphis got this event. FedEx basically to keep FedEx. Mm-hmm. That's where happy. they're based. Yeah, they kept. This was done to FedEx had to renew their contract for the FedEx Cup, and they were balking a little bit. And as a bonus, they threw them the that the big event would be in. Oh, Mem- was it one the, the St. Big Jude ev- tournament? Isn't yeah, that part yeah, of it? And they still, you know, St. Jude Hospital still makes the money off right. the thing. So okay, and now they, they go to Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, it's the uh, BMW, yeah. which is now played all over the place. Right. Used to be that the BMW was the old Western Open. It was played in Chicago right. and uh, and uh, and uh, you know Indiana, Crooked Stick, and places like that. But uh, <clears throat> I think it was a good idea to eliminate one of the playoff things. So. You were t- I didn't see this. You told me Scheffler walked in Cam Smith's putting yeah, line. It's all over the uh, oh, internet. Yeah, uh, Cam Smith's. Uh, Looking up a putt and Scheffler, because <clears throat> Cam Smith has taken off after the FedEx Cup to go to sign with Liv. He's already signed, apparently, but hasn't announced it. And, uh, you know, he wants to get the, what, $18 million for first or something if you mm-hmm. uh, if you win the FedEx Cup. And, yeah, he walked. Uh, he was playing with him. He walked in front of his putting line. Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> and, wow. And he's about, you know, Scheffler's about six foot three. And Yeah, what's Smith going to do about I, it? Yeah, he's a... Uh, He's going to be offended. I is guess, that what's but, going to happen though with a lot of these guys that are? Well, they're only going to play uh, unless they win their lawsuit, which I don't think they will. Uh, they're suing them for antitrust or something for throwing them out of the PGA. But uh, if uh, unless they win, they're not. Gonna, the only time they're going to be playing together is uh, majors. Majors and. It's gonna, you know, what's gonna be interesting is when the, they start falling out of the points. Mm-hmm. You know, if if the world golf rankings don't include them, which they shouldn't, because they're only playing fifty four holes, and they're playing them without a cut, and they're only playing with forty eight person fields, so they shouldn't include them. When they start falling off, they're gonna uh, unless you got the lifetime exemption or something. It'll be interesting to see what the Masters does. Yeah, if they keep inviting. Oh, I mean. Dustin won one, right? Didn't he? Yeah, he he's a champion. Yeah. Reed's a champion. Yeah, they got. Yeah, the champions will come back. There's no doubt about Sergio's it. Sergio's a champion. Yep. Uh, uh, who else? I'll look it up. It is amazing the way the Euros all t- jumped at that money, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the Euros, the Euro, the Ryder Cup team for the Euros is going to, you know, they're probably going to have. Cameron Smith could have owned the PGA. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's going. He's, I, I think a lot of them think that they'll collect the money for two years. And Bubba Watson. Live my, Bubba yeah. Watson's but a master. It's time for Bubba to go, yeah. But you're right, yeah, he's a former. Did he go to live? Yeah, he went to live. I don't think he's played yet, but he's announced that he's going. He should go, though. He can't play anymore. So, you know, he's, what, 45 maybe? Yeah. 45. So. I'm just looking through the story. Uh, uh, Adam, didn't Adam Scott, didn't he? No, didn't he's, he still he's not a uh, master. I thought he won in like 13. Yeah, but he hasn't gone yet. He's not a live guy. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, gotcha. He hasn't gone to live yet. Did Adam Scott become the first Australian to win the Masters? Yeah. Yes, I believe. Yes. 
uh, that that is true, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, then he was he long putting then when he won it. Was he already uh, long putting? I, I don't know. He still is though. He was going to be the. Yeah, I thought that figured, was outlaw. It was, but you can you can't you can't, can't put it, it against your body. So, oh. Joe, well, did you mention Patrick Reed already? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't think his. I don't think all of his mates are going to miss him. <laughs> no, <laughs> he's. That's it's. It's too bad because well he gets to keeps going to the, he gets to keep going to the Masters so he can ignore mom and dad who live like three blocks right. away. <laughs> right. <laughs> what a what a beauty he must be, man. He's uh, he's he wins the Masters basically in his hometown and won't, at where he played college golf and won't talk to mom and dad it's, oh well uh, phil yeah. we forgot to mention phil 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 can't break an egg anymore god <laughs> almighty he's terrible he's you know he's, i've never heard that before for golf i think he's uh i think he's gone goofy well he's been phil. goofy it's now being it's more it's manifested be, becoming, yeah it is i think it's i think between his gambling and his his need for adger, adoration, mm-hmm. and he's all of a sudden he's lost that. Ad, you know, he's been, for some reason, the public cheered mightily for him for 35 years, mm-hmm. and he's lost that. Is it because that. he and, was the Cubs, the Chicago Cubs forever? He didn't. Well, that could have been. But, he, you know, he won, a, he won a PGA event at night when he was a 19-year-old amateur. I think he's the last one to win who was an amateur. And he was always swashbuckling Phil who would take any shot he wanted. And and the public didn't, you know, and he'd smile and give everybody the the, the automatic thumbs up thing. But, uh, you know, they didn't realize he was a jackass. And uh, now now it's uh, coming out because he's, you know, he's more. Plus he had the two little girls that were, you know, the little girls running, run out, out, on the field. running out there and congratulating him. Even though I think he was using new ones some of the years because they never got any bigger, they were always. <laughs> I was like, the same age. They were always like five and three. You know? <laughs> a new collection of little blondes. So. Right. I didn't see thirty seconds of the Vikings game. I didn't either. Yeah. You didn't have Viking fever yesterday. No, no, no. Viking fever. No. I was in the I was in the car though, and I turned on the radio briefly to uh, see what the score was. And the fawning over the new attitude about oh. the Vikings immediately What's the, what's the new attitude? Crazy. Oh, they just all love each other. They're playing prank, pranks in the locker room. It's oh, just boy. a completely different atmosphere. Yeah. That's uh, without evil old Zim there, and we have these new hip uh, hip guys, and uh, how great they are in the room. They got see that the NHL's got a room, right? Right. The NFL has rooms. Oh. You have the quarterback room. Mm, you have yeah. the offensive line room. Defensive room. You have. I heard somebody ask him on the radio the other day, how are the rooms different? Oh, boy. How are the rooms oh, different? Got to have different yeah. rooms. Different rooms, yeah. yeah. So. What was the line from the one hockey player about the Pope? They got him in his own room. That was, in, yeah. uh, <laughs> that was on the island, the North Stars and. <laughs> Islanders and the Pope, the Deuce got shot. And mm-hmm. I think it was Kurt Giles who watched it on TV and said, Jesus, they got him in his own room. <laughs> <laughs> he was shot in Rome. The room. Yeah, got him in his own room. room. Kurt Giles, that's funny. Still the coach of the Edina. I think he's still the Edina didn't coach. He step down? Did he step down? Oh, Maybe. Did he won a two, three state titles, didn't he? That's Pat. not good enough for the Edinas, man. Yeah, I think he's. I think, I think they liked him, yeah. Pat, what's going to happen to your twins? Joe, they're going to uh, finish under 500 in third place. That's my fear. Yes. They're, uh, they, uh, a left-handed pitcher. Uh, do you have any left-handed pitchers down there in uh, Faribault? Egan Bondi. He just got drafted by the Egan uh, Bondi Union would, Hill uh, Bulldogs. The, Egan Bondi would stick it to this club. They <laughs> wouldn't have a chance. They get, you know. They they can't hit a left-handed. I didn't realize Kylo Garlic was the MVP of this team. They don't have him. They're horrible against left-handed pitching. But the stupidity displayed on did you you weren't watching Saturday night, were you? I saw most of it. Ninth inning. Oh god. Well, I didn't make it Jorge ninth Lopez, inning. our new closer, right? Good stuff. Throws ninety seven sinker. You go in there, they get he strikes a guy out, then they get a little bloop hit. And now they got Max Stasi up. 
their catcher. Who's hitting about a buck he, 80. He's a, <laughs> and we're, you get ahead of him 0-2, oh. and you end up throwing him breaking balls and walking him. And it was the stupidest pitch selection I've ever seen. I don't know if it's Sanchez. I don't know if it's their scouting report. They had a big conference out there among, uh, oh, Korea, I guess, was in on the other conference. And then the lefty hitter comes up. He's terrible. He's the guy's hit had four hits all year. The guy that hit it down the left field line and Gordon jumps, dives at it and almost turns it into an inside the park home run. But it was just it, it was the worst loss of the year, in my opinion. I agree because you had a team that was completely indifferent. Mm -hmm. Now they're with interested. With the bottom of their order, right. with the bottom of their order, and you're bleeping around with them. Mm -hmm. Go after them. Mm -hmm. That that Ugh. bat is it Stassi or Stassi, whatever you call. It. Yeah. I, I was screaming at my television. Yes. Yes. Throw it over the plate. Yeah, they're throwing him. They walked him on a changeup. What right? are you doing? Yes. Yeah. Don't you this last You did. Week. You did call this. You get all these guys on 02 counts, and then we got to start being fiddly. <laughs> yes, fiddly is a good word for it. Don't be fiddly. No. <laughs> get them. Strike them out now. God almighty. Yeah, it's... Uh, and, and so... I did a little tirade about this uh, just not long ago. Dylan Bundy, mm -hmm. they have this stat that when he faces hitters for the third time, he's, they beat him. So they the figured other, him out. He, had, he gave up two hits and five innings, and then they have to hook him because mm -hmm. it's the third time. That theory might work if it's Houston or the Mighty Whiteys or Kansas anybody. City in 2015. But these yeah. are the... Bleeping angels. They suck. <laughs> Send him back out there. Tell mm -hmm. him to walk Otani and go after the rest of them. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And then you blow out your whole bullpen. And when you get to extra innings, you got to send out long ball Emilio and lose the game. Yep. God, they're stupid. Mm -hmm. They're just, I, I have announced that. See in Fort Myers? 60, no, forget that. Oh. 62 years. I, You and I, Joe, we've seen a lot of crummy baseball teams. Mm -hmm. But we knew they were crummy. Right. We knew they were they were bad. They weren't supposed to be good. They were bad because they were bad. Right. I hate <laughs> this team more than any team in 62 years. Wow. I hate them. They so <laughs> Stupid! They're just, they don't use logic. They decide at 2 o'clock in the afternoon how many innings they're going to let a guy pitch. They are stupid. They're stupid. Well, is it Rocco stupid then? No, Rocco's got 12 guys in there with their iPads telling him what he should do. Oh, for Pete's sake. You know, I think Wes Johnson went back to, went, not back, went down to LSU just to get away from it. I think there's too many cooks in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't, I, I don't know what it is, but uh, now they're home virtually the rest of this month. Yes, yeah, well, I do love. By it. the way, I mean, this yeah, either yeah. happens now or it's yeah. not happening. That's I, unfortunate. That I do home. love that a breaking news item surfaced over the weekend where breaking Carlos Correa is going to opt out yeah, of his contract. Right. Thanks, you know, John Heyman, who's a really good reporter and breaks a lot of stuff, decided to make that a a story. A, a story, which it. We wasn't. all knew that. Yes, yes. <laughs> We've been out. They basically announced it when they signed him. And guess what? The way he's playing for thirty-six million, they want him to they opt out. They want him to opt right. out. Right. He's not playing that well. He's not. He's. You know what? He could give you a little harder run to first base sometimes. Yeah. He had said three hopper to shortstop that he knows he's going to be out on. He likes to Cadillac that he, one. Yeah, uh, he doesn't exactly bust his ass down there. It's mm -hmm. not exactly puck, that's for sure. But well, uh, anyhow. Hey, let me mention it. We did an ad for it on uh, Garage Logic This weekend, BIR, this is it. These are. Did you ever go to the drag races? Yes, I did. Yeah, loud, loud, aren't they? Very loud. <laughs> <laughs> Very you fast. Smell burning rubber. Yeah, yeah, you do. And it's... Uh, it's uh, they keep coming one after another. I I told you the story about the time we uh, we uh, Katie lined up Yates to race in the, the. Katie was Katie and I went up there with 
Yates and his yeah. Kevin Berger when yeah. they were happily married. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And that was that we went up on Friday. He got fired on Thursday <laughs> at the station here, which immediately immediately put a little pal over could, the weekend. It could. Yeah. yeah, put a little pal over the weekend. How are things? I think kind it's of, Paul. Kind of Paul, pal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't pal. Z, Paul. Paul over the weekend. Right. Yes, Paul over the weekend. Hey. And so on Saturday, I went out early because I was covering it. And, right. And they had a pass to get in. And Katie, Katie had been in with me a couple of days earlier and directed them to go through here. And he kept advancing with the passes. And pretty soon he's lined up like fourth to take off. <laughs> and then, and then he's, he's pretty soon they're ready to race, you know. <laughs> You know what? Which put him in an even worse mood. Than he had up been yes. already. Yeah. To hell with the Twins. Let's talk town ball, shall we? Let's. Billy that, Nelson's on the phone. The tournament's this weekend. Starts Friday, baby. The uh, Dundas Dukes, Billy Nelson. Billy, when is the MVP dinner? The MVP dinner, Thursday night, August 18th at uh, the Fairball American Legion. Wow. And uh, how many uh, now tournament MVPs, all classes uh, from when to when? Two of the MVPs, all classes from uh, the last year, all the way back to the latest, longest to go one was 1950, Ed Piacentini from Fergus Falls. Wow, that was one class days, right? Exactly. When I told him uh, that he was the longest to go guy that I could find, he said, they're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> that probably explains it. Uh, I was looking back at, uh, I wrote a, a piece for the program there, and I was looking back at the uh, the 2A, you know, when the fast town ball uh, that was played after the war, and Fergus Falls was the one knocking off the Southern mini teams. Fergus oh, yeah. Falls was a powerhouse, right? Exactly. He said that, you know, he said we weren't favored by any means. We had to play Austin in the finals, and they had Moose Scourin. Yes. And and he tracked down Moose years later in, in Comiskey Park and, and uh, mm-hmm. pulled him over and said, hey, you remember me from that tournament? And Moose says, uh, yeah, you weren't the best player in that tournament. I was. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably hard to argue since Moose made a few all-star teams and stuff. Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, of course, MVPs have a tendency to be, be associated with the uh, with the uh, winning, winning team. Winning teams, so. yeah, that tends to. How be. many uh, How many Dukes have been MVPs? Uh, we've had five five Dundas guys. It started with Lou Olson in 1982. He hit uh, you know 36 home runs in 42 games. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there was Scotty Nelson, and uh, he was 1988. And then we went back to back in '98 and '99. There was uh, Aaron Erickson. He was the one that traveled from. Oh California yeah, that kid. Yeah, weekend. I did a column on that kid. That was great. Yeah. And, and Kate, he was Joe, the MVP. He commuted on Joe, weekends. This guy worked. Was it Wells Fargo he worked for? No, he worked for uh, like Anderson Consulting. I think. Yes, but he exactly. they the they transferred friends. him to L.A. So yep. he would <laughs> fly home. He would. You know, work wow. his arse off for four days there, Monday through Thursday. Get on a red eye Thursday night. Wow. Come back Friday and play for the Dukes and get on a red eye. Get on the latest possible flight Sunday and fly back. Right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It was. That, how many years did he do that? Just the one. Well, I, that was just the one from uh, California. But the year before, he was in Milwaukee, and that worked out a little better. Yeah, yeah, he could drive in, that in one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, yeah. he could fly too because they'd fly him every week. You know, they <laughs> those companies would fly you home at mm. least one weekend. I think maybe maybe every weekend. I'm mm-hmm. not sure if you, you know how it went, but he didn't seem to have any problem getting here. And then uh, who, who else? Uh, what other MVP? Then, yeah, in '99, it was Bryce Plescourt. Okay. And uh, he's a local Northfield guy, and he hit a bunch of home runs. And yeah, he I hit a couple off me that summer. That was a lot of fun, <laughs> Billy. Thanks for that memory. At Hamburg, they had that side up. You hit this side, you can fly anywhere in the U.S. versus via Sun Country or something like that. And, <laughs> and we were playing Beesville, he hit one off of that. So okay. that was fun. Did they fly him? Yeah. Were they telling the truth? Did they give him the flight? <laughs> well, they gave him the flights, but he never went, he, he told me. <laughs> This is like the champion's dinner at the Masters. Yeah, right. (laughs) 
And then in 2015, uh, it was Tyler Jones. Okay. And, so and he's a he's a uh, Farmington kid that he and his twin brother have been playing with us for about 15 years. So how many uh, total MVPs showing up? Uh, I've got uh, a couple representatives for people that have uh, passed away, but otherwise mm-hmm. there's 68 total. Wow, that'll be fun. That say they're coming. A couple have canceled in the last week. Uh-huh. Uh, they just say they have two butts, but otherwise uh, it's a, it's going to be a very good representation of of the MVP. So i got to share a quick and, story. Again, let me first oh, ask you, some people from around the various places in the country? Even Bobby Kelly's coming from Oakland, California. Okay. And, uh, I mean, some people say that they thought he was the best shortstop they've ever seen. Prior Lake guy, you know. Yes, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, when uh, you guys all you threw our Prior Lakes out, honest Prior Lake Jays <laughs> that we were, you threw us out after three straight hey, titles. Don't give me that you guys threw them out. <laughs> I, I didn't throw anybody out. <laughs> okay. All so right. I got to share a quick Even, story. Billy uh, uh, approached me and, and Charlie uh, a while back about doing this, and I thought it was a fantastic idea. So uh, Billy reaches out and says, hey, uh, Reeves, I got Jimmy Eisenreich coming. Is it okay if we get him a hotel room? Because he's driving up from Kansas yeah. City. And I said, yeah, I, I can I can okay. take care of that. Eisenreich's coming, huh? <laughs> Fantastic. What? Yeah, he's, hey, was, he's I, coming and so signed Buck. And, and uh, so and like guys like Jerry Wickman, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. LSU. I just wish Botton would have been an, M- an MVP because – He'd he'd be a story right there yeah. himself. Hey, Izzy, uh, what did Izzy win it the same year that he had to leave the Twins early in that year? Then eighty four. Uh, it was nineteen eighty three. I think it might have been that. I think I he don't... left the he left early that year and went up back yeah. up to St. Cloud and they reinstated him and he what he hit nine hundred or something. <laughs> I mean, nobody could get him out. It was well, amazing. He, yeah. It was amazing when he was having his problems. That little second that it takes to calm down, he could still hit, even yeah. though he was having all the problems with How the How is threats. he now? Great. Great. Yeah. Yeah, uh, oh, he's, uh, you know, on the write-up that I have, and you can see them all on our, on our website, but uh, on the write-up, he was telling me, he said, back then, if I said three words in a month, it would be a lot. He said, now <laughs> yeah. I can't stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's making up. <laughs> well, I think those Phillies changed his life when they started calling him Dahmer. <laughs> That was his nickname. They thought he looked, they, they kind of loosened him up without telling him he <laughs> thought he looked like Jeffrey Dahmer. So they, you know, oh, hey, Dahmer, come on over here. You know? <laughs> it yeah, was oh, worse in Boston. Remember what they yelled at him in Boston? Oh, everything. Hey, Jimmy, you nervous? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were terrible. Yeah. They were, uh, we're missing Driscoll, though, man. That was ill timed. Well, I had at least five people ask me if Joe Driscoll would be there. And- and uh, they hadn't seen it. I, I didn't get a hold of him in time to interview him. Uh, I had called him a couple months before, but he just wasn't in any shape to talk. So I had to, for his, I wrote up my memories of him, and and uh, I actually quoted uh, the column, one what of what your columns from, I think it was 2001, when Nancy said, how could anyone spend 15 minutes with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> but, he, but then he says he grows on you. Yeah, he right. grew on all of us. Yeah, he did I, grow uh, on all of I us. I heard a great Driscoll story. This would have been two weeks ago, you guys. And uh, you guys know Mike Nagel, state board member. Yes, he runs yes, the Bird do, Island yeah. Town Baseball team. And so they had a meeting in Faribault, and he said, I, I remember playing as a kid, because I think he and Joe are around the same age. He says, I remember playing as a young kid with Burt Island, and I got to meet the Arlington guys, because they had yeah. either were playing in a region yeah. or something together. And he was with a group of the Arlington guys, and he said, man, I hear about this Driscoll. Apparently, he's the greatest player in the league. And the guy sitting next to him was, nah, he's, he's terrible. He's washed up. He's no good. And went on and on and kept saying that for about 10 minutes, and he got up and Mike Nagel asked the group, well, who was it? Oh, that was Joe Driscoll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, what a beauty, what a beauty. So, uh, yeah, I missed the funeral. Didn't your, uh, didn't your wife say she saw more ex-great baseball players than she'd ever seen in her life? Uh, at that, well, uh, yeah, she said, I, I've never seen so many old ball players in my life. <laughs> at Joe's funeral, yeah. And there were a lot of people there, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're going to kick things off around 6 o'clock, right, Billy, for the event on yep. Thursday night? Yep, that's when we're looking for people to start checking in, and, and hopefully uh, we'll have a meal about 6.45, and uh, Eisenreich will give, a, give you know, 10 minutes, and I think Steiny will talk for about 10 minutes, and 
And I know you'll talk for an hour and a half. <laughs> you there, Reeves? I'm the MC for the, oh, okay. for the festivities on Thursday night. So it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. And if you want ticket information, um, I'll provide it on the sports talk. I link. might have to come down and see Izzy uh, Thursday. Oh, I good. Now I got a driver. I this seen is even him for better. years. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I can make that detour through Jordan on my way home. For God's sakes. So, hey, uh, well, that, that's going to be fun, Billy. Hey, and the Dukes, did the Dukes make the tournament? The Dukes made the tournament. Uh, they were the fourth seed and played New Market, and uh, they beat New Market uh, on a walk off the first game at Dundas because uh, New Market doesn't have lights. And the second game, they went to New Market on Sunday afternoon. And uh, I would say the New Market right field fence is about 280. <laughs> That's Louis, being Louis kind. He would have loved New Market. <laughs> <laughs> he could have dropped it over there all day long. But anyway, yeah, it, it, they got beat up a little there. And then they went to, uh, oh, who's the? St. Patrick. Patrick. Yep. Yeah, it, it was a, that was a great, uh, nice field and great lighting from what I heard. And uh, I, I had to be up. I was up north that week, uh, that week. And uh, but they ended up beating them eight to three there, so they were they were in as a three seed. And, and just play Egan the first game on Sunday afternoon at four thirty. And just think how humiliated you'd be if you were one of the hosts and your team got eliminated by the Webster Sox. God, I they? knew he was going to bring this up. <laughs> the Webster Sox not that long ago lost fifty one in a row in their wow. league, but. Uh, they took down the Lakers. Are there uh, any teams from the Iron Range area? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Marble is a longtime powerhouse. Yeah. Are they still so a powerhouse? So this is statewide. Oh, yeah. This is a very foreign world to be. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's. Uh, we got a lot of town baseball fans that listen to this show in mm, Garage Logic, yeah. though. I run into them all okay. the time. All right. Hey, Billy. Thank you, sir. Well, Thanks, Billy. I might you see you Thursday. That'll be good. Come okay. on down. All right. See you. See you, Billy. Right. He yeah, is yeah. Uh, done. An amazing job with this, tracking down all these guys yeah. over the past, you know, 12 months. got a months. guy from 1950. Yeah. Yeah. That's wow. 72 years ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. Everybody's daddy. <laughs> yeah. I am going to, this is the 60th anniversary of Gene Hansen. Remember that name? Golfer. Great golfer. Yeah. Great local golfer. It, this is the 100th anniversary of the Minnesota Publix coming up here. Okay. And two years in a row, 61 and 62, he won the state amateur, the state open, and the Publix 60 years ago. And in one of those years, he they, they used to play 36 holes in the quarterfinals. Of these. They were crazy back then. He played like 219 holes in a, a week or something. But uh, one of the guys he beat uh, in like 38 holes – in the quarters on his way was Teddy Stark, who's a member at Edina. Mm -hmm. And Teddy's in his early 90s. He's been a member at Edina since he was an infant. Yeah. So I'm going to have lunch with Teddy and a couple other guys on uh, Thursday and try to do a thing on the 100th anniversary of the Publix and wow. stuff like that. You just that. said you're having lunch with somebody else on a Thursday. Yes. He's coming to the golf uh, also. Who? Uh, who did we name just now? No, oh, you said you said earlier in the show you were having lunch with somebody on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Must be a golfing guy. Wongy's got a golfing uh, thing going on, so I can have lunch with Teddy. So. Okay. He's mm -hmm. going to have two lunches. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're all going to be at the same location. Ah, I see. And Wong's picking up the tab whether he knows it or not. Well, there you go. He works at Edina, you know, okay. in his retirement. Is he so. a starter? Was a starter. I think now he helps out in the, yeah. in the pro shop yeah. or something. He just... Just there to agitate, which yeah, is one absolutely. of his absolute strengths. Yeah. So, really Such, I'm looking at my volunteer list for the week, and you want a Saturday shift? Saturday. Flipping burgers at uh, Belfield yes. in Fairville? Yeah. Yeah. Right. We'll, yeah. we'll get yeah. you behind the yeah. grill. Mm -hmm. I'm a hell of a chef. <laughs> I don't know. It's all about the food, the state tournament. It's uh, If you got some special treat, mm -hmm. then I usually make two appearances. <gasps> By the uh, way, guess uh, where I was Saturday? Picarnas. Bell Plain, Minnesota. Yeah. Watching the region, I think it was Jordan, region 6C final between the Jordan Brewers and the Gaylord, uh, who's, what's their nickname? Islanders. Islanders, thank you. They ran out of pork burgers. Really? I said, hey, 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 where's my pork burger? And he said, no, 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 no. You work with Sushere. I am uh, not giving you a pork burger. Uh, really? You got me denied a pork burger at Belle Plaine. Thanks well, what a lot. What do I do? I don't even know who you're talking about. Well, I think he's a Trump guy. He must have, you must have ripped oh, him or something. Oh. <laughs>
I'm kidding. Even the Trump guys have got to be a little rattled this week. <laughs> All right. Anyway, yeah, that's it's gonna it. be fun. It's gonna be fun. So I'm looking forward to this weekend. And I'll I'll, I'll be in charge of driving Judd down there. One oh day. boy, yeah, so, you're gonna uh, have to get him Judd, down there. Judd loves a, what? What are you charging for a beer? Three bucks? Four uh, bucks? I think we're charging four. Four. If I'm not mistaken. Judd likes us four bucks can of beers down there. But we'll get you a deal if you buy the six pack. We'll get you a deal. Oh yeah, yeah. that's true. All right, are we good? We're good. We covered golf. We covered baseball. We badmouthed the Twins. Yep. And that's about it. And we what spent an extensive amount of Viking coverage because none of us watched the game. Yes, that's true. We missed <laughs> that, though. But uh, what the hell? You know, they got a couple more of these before it counts. That's right. The Bears looked really good, by the way. I think the Bears are going to be damn good. NFC champs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe. All right. See you.